Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the report with me, Yasmin Khatoun. On tonight's program, we look at the killings of two police officers in Brooklyn, New York, and the latest events in France where a man has been detained after injuring nearly a dozen people in Dijon. But first, Beji Saeed Asebsi has won Tunisia's presidential election today, beating Monsef Marzouki with 55.68% of the vote. Sarah Sai has been following the story. Exactly four years ago today, Tunisia was in the middle of a popular uprising that inspired other countries to do the same. But today, Trump's voters have elected 88-year-old Beji Asebsi, a parliament speaker under former dictator election. Ben Ali, the as the first ever democratically elected the leader in the country. Election officials reported a turnout of 48%, suggesting voter fatigue in a country with about 5.3 million registered voters, voting for the third time in two months. Turnout had been just under 70% in the previous two elections. But what will a Tunisia under Beji Gade Asebsi look like? Asebsi's victory enables him to consolidate power with his new secular party, Nida Tunis, which already controls parliament after Inahda lost the legislative elections in October. Asebsi is also planning to strengthen relations with Egypt as part of what he describes as a need for cooperation in counter-terrorism across the region. Asebsi's presidential opponent, former caretaker president Monsif Marzouki, who took charge following the 2011 revolution, warned that Asebsi would reverse the gains of the revolution and bring back the authoritarian policies of previous regimes. Tunisia's Enahda party, who still have a great backing in the country, did not officially back either candidate, but are believed to have lent towards Marzouki. The North African nation has so far avoided the bitter post-revolt divisions that are currently troubling Libya and Egypt. And with this election, Tunisians will be hoping that their newly found freedoms will not be short-lived. Joining me to discuss this, Mamoun al Abbasi, news editor at Middle East Eye, and calling from Doha, Dr. Nouruddin Miladi, Associate Professor of Mass Communication at Qatar University. Thank you both for joining us today. Can I come to you first? Thank you. Um, Mamoun, can I come to you first? Is this a result we were expecting? Um, I think yes, we are. If you look at the parliamentary uh, election results, it did clearly mention that Nida Tunis, which Sepsi heads, is the, uh, the front runner. So it it's really shouldn't come as a, as a surprise. However, we must be careful not to portray it as a, um, a crushing defeat or as a one party um, that has gained uh, an absolute majority in the elections, unlike the previous elections where Anahda um, was by far the number one um, a party with a distant second. In this case, we have a very, very close, two, two close elections. The parliamentary one, where we have Anahda, is a, is a close second, and the presidential one, when we had Marzouki, also as a close second. This shows that um, the electorate is, in Tunisia is still divided. It's not a, a winner takes all, um, even if it is in terms of uh, election results, in terms of um, the, the parliamentary seats and the Tunisian public, it's still very much 45-50, uh, maybe 50-50. And if we look even further into who are Nida Tunis, um, we'll see it in the coming five years, you'll see that it's not a, a monolithic body that is just uh, unlike Anahda, which just has similar uh, uh, party outline. It's really made of people who are on, on opposing ends, Democrats and pro-dictatorship leftists and rightists, uh, whose sole aim is to unseat Anahda. So yes, it's, it's, it is expected, yes, it's a, a victory for democracy today, but it's not a crushing defeat that uh, wipes out half of the uh, Tunisian electorate. Dr. Nouruddin, can I bring you in here? What does this mean for the Anahda party? I mean, this is, this is another defeat. This is uh, the Islamic movement in the country. We saw the revolution a few years on from there. Has everything changed? 
Well, I mean, obviously for another party itself, I think this was expected and probably this, uh, the, 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 this was partly uh, planned in a way, if I may say it right, because um, uh, the, um, uh, the, the consecutive meetings between uh, Rashid Ghanoushi and also Baji Qaidi Sibsi in the previous months and, and uh, over the last year, I think testify to a kind of a certain agreement to uh, probably share a kind of a power in the, in the, in the country. I think Anahda realized at a certain point uh, during the last couple of years that um, it will not be able to um, run the state due to the fact that, um, um, uh, first of all, it does not have the, uh, the, 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 uh, the right expertise to run the government and also be in charge of the, um, of the state. But also, uh, it, it, it also did realize that um, uh, 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 there are other powers there in the country which are still in control, whether we talk about the economy or we talk about the def different ministries or we talk about um, um, the, 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 um, um, the police and, uh, and so forth. So the, the, there is an infrastructure from the uh, previous regime's apparatus that is still powerful, three entrenched in the system of the state, and in fact uh, affected the, um, uh, the, 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 the ability of the previous government to um, uh, run the country smoothly. Um, I think now, obviously, this is, in my opinion, a historical moment, um, uh, no matter who, who is the winner in this case. But I think the country has made a real transition toward a, a smooth democratic uh, process. And I think um, um, everybody should be congratulated, really, both um, um, uh, contestants, but also uh, the army, the police, and all the, um, um, the, 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 the organizations that have been involved, in, including the, um, the committee that is in charge of the election um, um, election process. I think this is historic for all Tunisians, and it is a pride for not only Tunisians, but every um, uh, other um, 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 people in the Arab region. The country now is, uh, I think, going to um, make a true transition towards um, probably a stable, uh, prosperous um, economic, political, and um, uh, educational system in the, in the in the next five years. I'm hoping, though, that the um, uh, the government of Qadi Sibsi and under his leadership, there will be a kind of um, a coalition government that does include um, every other aspect of the spectrum, meaning um, involving all the can, can other I powers. Can I bring Mahmoud back in, Dr. Nouradine? Mahmoud, what will Tunisia look like under uh, uh, Sibsi? Um, there, are, there are two scenarios. Um, no, nobody will really know in five years' time. There are two scenarios. The optimistic one, which is um, democracy will continue um, as, as, as it is. And when we have a, a viable opposition, that there is a, a transition of power, uh, one, one election you have a Sipsi winning, the next election perhaps another power winning. And this is the, hopefully this is the, the scenario that we all we all hope and to a certain extent in Tunisia expect because they are much more um, pragmatic. Um, there is a second scenario which is uh, um, hopefully it, it won't come to that, which is in the event of the uh, premature death of a or, or or the creeping. Um, the return of the old authoritarian old guards slowly and slowly where they said, OK, we, we won the elections now and that's it. That, these are the final elections. People used to fear in the 90s that the Islamists would say one, one vote, one time. But I, you hear a lot of uh, ultra-secular or secular extremists saying the same thing. That's, that's the end of it. Once we well, win, we've, there we've are heard no from elections. We've heard from SFC closer ties to uh, General Sisi um, in Egypt. What does this mean for, for Tunisia? I, I, my personal opinion is that the Tunisians won't won't go um, the direction of, of, of military dictatorship. Um, hopefully, uh, because they've seen what, what it has done to Egypt. Uh, Egypt is literally uh, living on on Gulf aid. Uh, its uh, tourism has gone down. Its freedom for everybody, for the for the secularists as well as the Islamists. Uh, its comedians can no longer poke fun at government. So this is not something that Tunisia would be happy with. Uh, it's, a, it's a failed model. If anything, if anything, um, Sisi would be kicking himself right now if he only waited for some elections where he would have the Islamists unseated in a free, fair way, free and fair way, without all the uh, you know all this crackdown. But uh, so I think I think maybe um, Egypt should be learning from Tunisia. I don't think the Tunisians have anything positive to learn from the Egyptians.
if uh, anything, if anything, it shows them this is the model to avoid both Islamist and secularist if they want a, a prosperous country, if they want a country that has a proper investment, a proper tourism. Uh, Dr. Nouruddin, can I can I bring you back in here? Should should Islamic factions like Al Nahda be fearful uh, of a crackdown with measures and and a speech about you know extremism uh, and closer ties to Sisi? Well, I think the um, uh, probably the, the the party that has been kind of fearful of the return of the old regime guard are the um, the party of Al, uh, of Al Marzouki, the interim uh, president. Mohammed al-Mazouki, in his election campaign, obviously, has warned of the return of the, of the old regime's kind of practices. Uh, I think al um, uh, is, 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 is obviously uh, part of its leadership, uh, part of its leadership uh, um, led by uh, Rashid Ghannoushi, obviously, are, uh, in a way, um, uh, probably um, uh, confident that um, uh, the, um, under the leadership of Qaeda Sibsi, probably the country would be run smoothly, especially if there is a kind of government that will encompass all the uh, or most of the major uh, political players in the country. Uh, some, some, some other probably um, uh, part of the leadership of Al-Nahda, which is um, a, a narrow minority, uh, they are kind of fearful and they voiced it. In, uh, we, we, we've seen it in uh, uh, various media organizations, especially on social media networks, um, where they voice their fears um, about the return of the old regime's um, uh, practices and, 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 and corruption. And they say Qadda Sibsi um, has got a history of corruption, has got a history of um, dodging everything in the country. Um, we don't expect any probably um, um, a thing except a true dictatorship under his rule. This is the this is the fear of some of the leadership of of, of Al Nahda. But um, I think I think my personal opinion, honestly, is um, uh, Tunisians obviously uh, during the last um, uh, two months have been kind of drained about three major elections in the history of the country. Uh, these will be uh, the, the, the culmination of the transition towards democracy. I'm glad that the uh, party of of, of, of Qaeda Sibsi, which is um, we may call it the old regime, but this old regime is reinventing itself, is, is actually uh, compromising itself into the democratic process, uh, painting itself new. Um, and I think it, it has accepted the rules of the game. So I'm glad that they have won in a democratic um, 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 probably elections, and they haven't probably brought or come to power through a military coup or through, or through the, 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 the backs of, uh, of a military tank. I, I think this is, this is the crux of the matter to me, and this is what is most interesting in the democratic process that we are witnessing in, um, in Tunisia. Uh, in my opinion, another obviously, during the last couple of years, has learned a lot from the failure of the Egyptian model with regard to the democratic uh, transition. And I think another knew that it's not going to be allowed to rule by itself or even be in power for the next whatever years. And, as, and I think that's why another has backed off from all the um, highlights or uh, the limelights of power in the country. Um, okay. Well, obviously, the, um, the, the, the next few months or the next couple of years obviously will tell us about what kind of regime we're going to witness under uh, Beji Kaide Sibsi. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Nouruddin and Mamoun, for joining us. For that, we'll be following uh, developments in Tunisia, of course. But that's all we have time for in the first part of the show. After the break, we'll be looking at the rest of today's news and the aftermath of the killing of two police officers in New York. Do stay tuned.